I'm Brankita and I'm here with Julian from Gorod. Julian, how are you today? Yeah, I'm pretty good, yeah, because yeah, this is the end of the day for me, so yeah, I've been um, hard working and but all's fine, but it's winter here, so it's been snowing and we are not used to that in the southwest of France, you know. So oh. for Canadian this is nothing, but for us this is a nightmare. <laughs> So no immortal sense of northern darkness spirits or something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no. I, I can live with this. That's fine. <laughs> I'm all good. Okay, okay. So tell me uh, about uh, your latest release. I think the album is going to uh, be released next week, if I'm correct, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Move to the 10th of March. Exactly. Yes. I think it's, uh, it was supposed to be released on March 7th, but something yep. has been changed, right? Yeah, it does change, but yeah, I mean, time to time the promotion and the stuff is something I, no, I have no control over it, so I'm not deciding anything about it, I'm just a singer, you know. <laughs> I'm <fixing Yeah>. it. <laughs> but yeah, first of all, you were supposed to be the 7th, but you know, on the 7th of March there will be a huge uh, demonstration in France, so the country is supposed to be completely shut down <laughs> because yeah. of demonstrations against that, because yeah, there's a uh, protesting against uh, the new retirement laws that has been voted in a very bad way, so people are super angry now, and the na national day is the 7th of March, so for us, that's better to release it on the 10th of March, so probably because of demonstration, probably not, I don't know, but let's say this is because of protesting, because we are French, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I have uh, heard about the protests and everything, but I, I kind of always try to, you know, focus on music because when I get into everything that happens around me, I become really sad, you know. But yeah, I get, sure. yeah, yeah. Yes. I'm so, done with it. <laughs> that was just explanation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, tell me, uh, I was um, I was watching some of your recent interviews, you know, and I'm trying, uh, you know, to do my best not to be repetitive with the questions and everything. And I have seen people already have asked you about the recording process. And I wouldn't like to repeat, you know, that kind of question all over. But if you would like to add something to it, uh, you can you can add right now. Not a problem. If you would think okay. there is something significant that should be added to this. Sure, to sure. This. If, it, if it makes sense to you, yeah, to add it. Otherwise, yeah, it's under classic. <laughs> that can be avoided. Okay, wait. Okay, okay. So nothing to be added, right? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> so, I must say, I have listened uh, to the album, and uh, I will pick my favorites, if you agree. I haven't seen that people uh, were discussing a lot of songs, maybe, you know, like the album, you know, in general, mostly, mostly. Yeah. But uh, I think for me, uh, I liked very much, uh, you can probably guess, like the first one, Chromatism, and I liked uh, Savitry. I think that they were exquisite, but totally like different, you know, than each other. So, uh, Chromatism is kind of, a, you know, when you think of it, it has some classic uh, death black metal kind of uh, song, like elements, you know, especially yeah. when you think of drums and vocals, and it's so driving, like something I would put on my alarm when I wake up, like, that's what I need, I'm waking up, <laughs> you know. Yeah, but right. also... You you definitely added some melodic elements to it, so it's uh, way more refreshing. It's not just like you know classic that, black death metal. It, it is also uh, melodic. But uh, speaking of sexy, I must say. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I hear some uh, things maybe other people don't hear when they're listening to the songs. So before the uh, first minute of the song Savagery, so. I can yeah. notice some kind of oriental uh, melodies. Am I correct? Or it's just something I'm, it's in my mind when I'm listening to it. Maybe I'm, it's just my perception. And later, I think after fourth minute, uh, I have noticed also some kind of a small blues part melody. Is, yeah. is that true? Or it's just me, <laughs> me and my perception of the song? No, it's so cool because it can be uh, analyzed pretty easily in a way because yeah, this is just because of the scale that is used on that. So there is a yeah. um, minor harmonic scale, so which which is used on it on this. Matthew doesn't use it that much usually, and this scale is extremely used in in extreme death metal. So usually, yeah, these are the natural um, minor, the diminished, and this one. So with the three scales, you can 
probably play like 90% of the entire death metal on the planet. <laughs> so this is why it has this typical sound. But, you know, the band that was overworking it was Nile. So that's a good example, because they were really playing that scale a lot. And so this is why he has this really oriental vibration in Savage Rishiri. At the beginning, all the introduction is based on that. So it brings something like, okay, so some kind of tense. And they wanted to make it because yeah, the purpose with that song was to make the most progressive song of the album. So on every record, Mathieu, so because I mean that all the music is basically the same for us. It comes from the head of Mathieu, the guitar player. So this is a guitaristic music completely, and it's only one, it's not a one-man band, but it's the one, one main composer, and he's doing this, this job. And so he likes to make like one song that is extremely brutal, one song which is a classic, one song that is exclusively groovy, one song that is short and direct, and one song that is progressive with a lot of elements, and Savagery is the progressive one. So um, there is always our little transcendence in the way, because transcendence is the most progressive thing he ever wrote because this one is 15 minutes long and in our entire discography afterwards there are references to this song and Savage, on the previous album this is the title track Aitra for instance that was inspired by this way of composing and on this album this is this one but this time we didn't choose the progressive song as a title track we decided for the title track to be the most easy listening song <laughs> oh yes, because, yes, yes. Because, because we want to make money, you know. We want to <laughs> <laughs> That's smart, right? <laughs> yeah. But uh, I was thinking. So uh, when I think of the title uh, "Savagery," uh, okay, you can also correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, first thing I was thinking about is that Hindu goddess. Uh, so is it uh, something? Uh, did you did you find it? Uh, I mean, did you find inspiration maybe for the title or something? Uh, or is uh, you wanted to say something else? I, I would like to, you know, to uh, say something more about the song specifically of the lyrics. Uh, what I wanted first of all is like to write extremely clear lyrics. That when you read the sentence, this is the sentence really. This is okay. There is you don't need any special skills or knowledge to understand it. But there are tons of hidden senses. <laughs> so this is what, what I have changed, has changed a lot. I mean, I was writing exactly the opposite way than usually, because usually all the senses are is pretty hidden. This is a lot of reference because yeah, I am actually an art historian and I can help myself of thinking writing lyrics as a university project, <laughs> as a master thesis or <laughs> as a thesis in the end. It has to be like this. But yeah, from this, the first time I wanted to to write more like punk songs, <laughs> in the way the sense is more direct. And if you want to have a second read, then you can make a, um, great, um, a deeper analysis. All right, and savagery is like this. And the hardest thing to understand on this song is the title. Yes, yes. Because the title, I guess that you can. If you make your own researches on the internet, on some books, on Hinduism, on stuff like that, then you can try to understand the connection I made. Because I make connections, and there are some hidden things. And only some people can understand it. And I made it for them as a tribute, as a dedication. So there are stuff that are extremely private, but it's impossible to understand it. But if you are not that person. <laughs> but also, this, there's something that is more or less universal in the way to, um, to understand the meaning. And this song, actually, the, the first title that will be the obvious one is, this, is the word I'm streaming at the end. So this is Mother. Oh, so I this see. is the, yeah, this, that, the, the, the actual name could have been Mother. But, you know, in the, I, I can explain it because I, I, I was using that because this name is in this um, Hinduism and spirituality. This is, let's say, more or less a secondary. So this is not a very important, deified person. But she is, can be, time to time, be a loving one or someone, someone that matters for the one who were in touch directly with the person. But this is something more private. So there is always a game between the overall, the universal, the global, and the extremely private. So in this song, there is always a balance because we, we all live in the same world, but we, we all live in our 
whole world. So the song is in the, all the texts are made exactly the same. It's, all, it's also a bit of it talks about nature, but not necessarily uh, ecology or um, stuff like this. Sure, this is involved in it, and I'm very pretty. Uh, let's say touched by this. I'm very sensitive about that topic because yeah, we live in it. We can see the global warming, all the change, all the thing. But I'm, I'm really not really oriented in the political way of seeing this. Just more in the how we feel as a human, as a human being, or, or just as, as a living entity in this world, because we are part of of a living. We are part of it. If, if it's following your spirituality or following just your experience. It can be just empiric also in, in that way. And so this yeah, this song is all, always talks about it. And when I say there is no temple in the name means yeah, you don't give <laughs> fuck about any temple, about any structure. Because yeah, if no one talks about it, I know who you are. And that you have much more values, you have much more you're worth more than anything that is still Actually, that doesn't disappear because the mind, the soul, or the music, music doesn't disappear. Or maybe, yeah, <laughs> if you lose that. I see what you <laughs> the mean. Yeah, sheet, or I, I see what you mean. Yeah, you also said, you also mentioned in the, one of the recent interviews, yeah, I'm that uh, kind of freak that watch all the possible interviews with people because I think I will also find more useful information there than on yeah. just Googling, you know, in comparison to Googling. I think it's way more, uh, you know, important than the, let's just say, uh, true. Uh, let, yeah. You know, it's more valid, I think. So uh, you also mentioned that uh, this album uh, is supposed to be something, uh, you know, to be, uh, that is going to be reflected more on real life like situations in opposite to the previous one. So yeah. that's why uh, it, yeah, it makes sense. But it's a good thing that you say uh, lyrics are, uh, uh, you know, written in that way that is, there is always open in interpretation. Like everyone, Absolutely. yeah, everyone can, uh, you know, think of it uh, in their own way. And that's the beauty of music and lyrics in general. Yeah, yeah it means that, yeah, you, you're not be. You don't really need to be that much documented to understand everything because yeah, yeah. this is what I wanted yeah, to be the, the lyrics to be more direct and um, yeah previously I like to be a bit more dreamlike and focused on the studies of different spiritualities because yeah I'm still studying spirituality and I'm really fascinated by it but everywhere in the world like it's a time to time it's so funny to see how very long distance tribes of people can feel exactly the same according to the star, to an element in the nature, or sometimes neighbors feel completely the opposite. So that's how also it is interesting and funny, and, and how our, also our surrounding, I mean the landscapes where we are living in, if it's in the mountains, if it's in the valley, if it's near a river, if it's in, then you create your own iconography, your, your own um, yeah, your own theology as well. So it is almost everything you are in are created by what is um, what you are surrounded with. And for me, yeah, this, I really uh, like this this way of studying things. But yeah, for this album, I wanted to do something. Uh, okay, I'm talking to you. Like this is more in a philosophic way that is touched this because yeah, usually I'm. I'm working on the iconographic aspect, and this time this is on the philosophical level. And the main philosopher who was my biggest inspiration for it is Aldous Huxley. And Aldous Huxley is famous for the Brave New World. And Are you kidding? Yeah, and sure. But uh, since I'm a kid, um, I'm reading his uh, philosophical works, which are actually way less famous. And he's talking about so many things, how we are um, actually got, um, yeah, living in our planet, how we organize ourselves, how the society is made and everything. But it's made in such a clever way. It's not, it's not sure everything is about dystopia when it comes with human beings. But exactly, there is yeah. something a bit more interesting in his way of doing things. And he's one of the main spiritual leaders of that album. So this is a different way of seeing things than usual. So all this actually is almost everywhere on this album. Definitely. Oh, that's nice to mention. And because, you know, because uh, I was already thinking about, uh, of asking you about the books or, or people who influence generally uh, your albums and uh, your life. And what yeah. would you like to recommend to people? Because I, I have a feeling that, I mean, music and uh, books and movies is all is all really connected. 
and Absolutely. have a, such a big influence on people's lives. And I think you find it very important. That's why I, I thought it was really significant question. So you can add some more people, uh, more authors, philosophers, uh, who you think that helped uh, influence you as a band and as an individual, you know? Yeah. And for, yeah, for me, it's been sure, I'm most influenced by what I've been studying. So uh, I've been studying all my life, no, my life not here, for a long time now, art history, and I'm doing a lot, a lot of musings. And for instance, the previous album, Aethra, was composed in that context, exactly. Uh, I had to, we started to work, yeah, to process on the new composition of new stuff, and Machi already started to write a new song that was on the that was on the line, and then uh, I went to Paris to an exhibition because I'm a very pretty often in Paris because all the best museums and exhibitions I mean in Europe are often there. Paris is really great for that, and uh, that was an exhibition uh, with respective of the painter Paul Gauguin, and uh, there was a lot, a lot of his paintings, and then I saw the. Um, a little picture that was absolutely not famous about a goddess, which is the goddess Hina. And this is one of the titles of this. And I was like, oh, I didn't know this uh, goddess. And I was like, oh, this is very interesting because you spend a lot of time in French Polynesia. And this is a myth that is actually used in different kind of islands. And when you, when you make your own researches about this um, goddess or this entity, there is so many different interpretations. I mean, if you change you move from an island to another, then you can see that the biggest stuff changes. So this one is mm, the one I actually chose. is inspired by the Fiji Islands, very specifically. Not on the island of that, but when I saw that picture, I was, oh, I, I was fascinated by that, but when I went out, well, so because yeah, the door was closing, and then it was, oh, I had to go out, it was, so it was the dusk, and then I saw the moon, I was looking at the moon, I was like, ah, oh, goddess Hina is a goddess, is an entity of the moon, I see the moon, okay. It's going to be about the moon and stuff like that. <laughs> so wow. It's yeah. just like simple things that just popped up to me. I went, okay, I'm going to make a study about the moon and spiritualities. And then the subject was found. No, and that's it. Yeah, <laughs> so that's that's that is good. Good way to get an inspiration, actually. And uh, yeah, I, was also, um, I also wanted to ask you something else. So maybe it's a bit of a weird question, but when I was watching interviews with some other bands, uh, uh, all, a lot of them, I've noticed, have some kind of rituals before writing, recording, like they have some kind of relaxing meditations and many other things. Do you have some kind of relaxing ritual or you just like do some other activities? Like what, what is uh, your thing to get yourself relaxed before the work? Either it can be writing lyrics, recording, like do you have something like Okay, today I'm just going to go for a beer or whatever, or I'm just going to play football, or I'm just going to sit and meditate. What are, what are your, uh, let's just say, top activities before, you know, the important work? Well, I have no specific ritual at all. I'm really not <laughs> that kind of person, actually. I'm just writing when I have to. And yeah, yeah first of all, as, I'm, as a vocalist, I'm not really a pure singer. I would say I'm a guitar, I'm a guitar player, I'm a guitarist, and I'm... I've always been a composer, a music composer. And when, I, when it comes to lyrics, it means that I have to do that. So it's not a choice, because we need lyrics. <laughs> so oh, yeah. this is why I have to write it. I never write um, lyrics spontaneously. I'm never doing that, ever. So it means, okay, the song is, the music is written, now I have to find some lyrics, okay, fuck. I have to focus on what I'm doing, because I'm always doing like tons of things at the same time. So during the day, if I'm not if I'm not working as a tour guide, I'm making my own researches in library. So I'm with my books and stuff, and then oh, there's an idea and inspiration that pops up. I start to write through some lyrics. I'm doing it's something completely. I was supposed to do that, but I'm doing that. Then I stop it. Then the, the library is closing because you know, the libraries are closing very early in France. I mean, the university library at six is done. So it's six p.m. So at six p.m. I, I'm the city center. I'm going to pop. So there to into the pop. I just uh, keep reading, and I have no problem to focus on the work with the noise around and stuff like this. I've been writing actually. At the end of my master thesis, uh, has been written on tour. We went on a, yeah, a nightliner party all the nights, all the time, and I wrote actually my entire introduction and conclusion, so it's a bit more than 50 pages, has been written in that context. So, and uh, for the last album, I think that 80% of the lyrics has been written in the pub. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's the cool. But, so you are into multitasking and working under the pressure, no problems. Yeah. <laughs> so no, like, yeah. yeah, and sorry, the mails, doing some stuff, so it's like, uh, that, oh, and so watching lyrics, doing something, and then, okay, going to, but, but, um, but it was not written drunk or anything. Um, uh, when I focus, when I have to stay focused, yeah, sure, after the second year, <laughs> Doesn't work <laughs> So I, I said the pub, so I, uh, yeah, I'm drinking some uh, non-alcoholic beverage, so non-alcoholic beers, some other cocktails and stuff like this. And then I can try to stay, I can stay focused. But yeah, or sometimes when I'm home, but yeah, mostly I'm writing when I'm outside, when I'm out. I, I feel better and I feel a bit more inspired. And then usually the last things, the last correction are made home just before recording. But I have no spe- special ritual. I can write. In any context, I, I, I really don't care. There is no magic about it. It's just so about a global reflection, and that sometimes there is a genius idea that pops up, and just gathering and trying to make it to make it fit with the music, but also yeah, exactly like where I'm right now. Sometimes just listening to oh, this song. Oh, this reason works. When I'm in the transport, I'm listening to oh. That's it. So I'm watching home. I don't have to forget it. I don't have to forget it, and then I'm ready. So there is no specific context to me. <laughs> okay. 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 So thank you for this one. And I have noticed, of course. Uh, so your music has been enriched with many elements over the years. And I've uh, noticed many interesting transitions, as I mentioned in your songs. Uh, and also, do you find that having a eclectic music taste is very important uh, for the musicians, like to be into many different genres and everything? Uh, I found that that is uh, very different when someone has the classic music taste in comparison to when a person likes only specific genre. It yeah. opens more space for creativity, inspiration, and other things. So, uh, what would you like to say about your favorite speaking of generally? I know you mentioned Kim Cran- uh, Kim Crimson, right? Right. Yeah. I remember that one. But do you have maybe some other people you would like to mention? I know you're into soul, into maybe hip hop. You said that before, right? Uh, what is on your Spotify playlist right now? Is there uh, some things uh, where you can uh, find your uh, inspiration for the new things, a new project eventually? What drives you today, let's say? Wow, many, many things. But yeah, unfortunately, I don't have Spotify. <laughs> I'm still... Spotify, YouTube, uh, yeah. vinyl, whatever. <laughs> but the, yeah, the only way I'm listening to music are my CDs and uh, my vinyls, and that's it. Yeah. So listening music home, and when I'm driving, so when I'm driving, it's like you know, these, are, these are my CDs. But um, if I see my yeah my playlist in my car, there is almost everything. So when it comes to metal, this is strictly really extreme metal. Oh, I mean, I, 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 mean. I, I, I never studied music. I never listened to heavy metal or thrash metal or whatever. I mean, the only thrash metal I listened to when I was younger is Arise from Sepultura. Oh, so, that's, that's, yeah, yeah. That's, that's my summer very close, song. Definitely. And <laughs> also um, uh, Divine Inversion from um, Slayer. So for me, that was my only accepted <laughs> thrash album. So yeah, I really started. Actually, the very first album I bought with my money, my mother gave me, is the first album of Brutal Truth. Oh. So this is my first metal album. <laughs> so oh. you understand? So I, I never understand the, when it's metal and it's like oh, singing like the opera. I was like, this is not metal to me. I, I mean, in my conception, I, when I was a teenager. So it was only extreme black metal, extreme death metal, grindcore. That that was it. It has to uh, to be um, to feature blast beats relentlessly, and also um, according to black metal, uh, for for instance, Jimmo Borgia or Cradle of Filth was really not my thing. I was more into at least Marduk, but Marduk only uh, Heaven Shall Burn, this kind of albums. But In Battle, In Battle is a pretty underground band. Abigor is one of my, is still my favorite bands ever. And um, yeah, definitely I come from the scene from Cryptopsy, Dying Fetus. So this is the um, Suffocation. Suffocation still remains my, one of my all time favorite bands. And um, I'm from the generation of the first Avenger Escape Plan. For me, the Alinger Escape Plan, when the release calculating and Fanini was the revolution of extreme music to me. So I'm really into really noise core, noisy stuff, really annoying music. This is what I like when it's extreme. 
and otherwise I'm listening to a lot of soul music. Soul music is my all time favorite. So yes, sure singers as Jay Hawkins, um, Little Richard, Ada James, Aretha Franklin, uh, Betty I Davis. I love Betty Davis. She's completely crazy. <laughs> yeah, and it's kind of, you know, it's interesting for me to hear that people who are playing death metal uh, actually can say they are into different genres because there will always be people, oh my God, how can you listen to that? You are in a death metal band. You shouldn't listen to that. Like, come on, like, yeah. <laughs> seriously, yeah. people, how old are we? You know? Yeah. yeah. That's- no, that's yeah. really not me because yeah, extra metal. I'm still listening to a bit of extra metal, but the majority of my, what I'm listening to is um, and the majority of shows I've been to lately were actually an opera. <laughs> so that's the latest show I've yeah, I've been I've been attending. It was the uh, Wagner. So it's uh, uh, Christian und Isolde. So it's a four hour long opera. <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> so three so yeah. acts. Yeah, what are your like, impressions? What are your impressions? After that's the, amazing because this is everything. This is the, this is the cinema, cinema of, of that time. There is everything. There is an acting. There is uh, music. There are the voices. There is. This is completely crazy. I, I really love Wagner as well. Not everything, but I love his way of doing, of composing operas. But, but this is. This is hard. <laughs> this is really hard to get into it. Um, you know, so I listen, I'm listening to a lot of class, what we call classic music. I'm only into Russian composer, for instance, um, Shostakovich, uh, Stravinsky, uh, not Tchaikovsky, it's a bit too cheesy for me, Prokofiev, and this, and Messia as well, but he's, he's hunger, he's not. What about um, Mussorgsky? I like that I am sure. my favorite, definitely, yeah. <laughs> it's really, um, it's a soundtrack. Everything sounds like it is a movie. You see images when you listen to it. So yeah, this is this is all absolutely great. So this is really that kind of stuff. And so, so sure, a lot of hip hop. And but I really I'm really into um, East Coast hip hop. You know, what, one of my favorite artists all time is Buster Rhymes, but also in a more modern way is um, was MF Doom. Unfortunately, he died like two, two years ago. Really. That's a big loss. And Shade La, also this old scene, sure, it's West Coast, but all these um, hip hop artists were combining different kind of genres with normal instruments, also like you know, like the roots, also. I uh, really love when it's, a bit, when it's a bit more experimental. Or for instance, uh, Ghostface Killer made Trace the album with uh, Bad Bad Not Good. So it means there are jazz musicians playing and he's like improvising on it, or because he's written, but. I love this kind of things, and yeah, this is really my my thing. So, uh, for me, uh, the, everything I really enjoy the most actually come from soul music because hip hop comes from soul music, no matter what. Yeah. You can yeah, imagine. yeah. Yeah. I, I was uh, also watching some uh, interviews with other bands, and they also mentioned, for example, how uh, you probably, of course, uh, heard of Funkadelic and how influential they were yeah. for many bands. Even some of the metal bands mentioned their influence, uh, their influence on you know on the scene at that time. Yeah, Funkadelic, yes, yeah, sure is is a major yeah. influence because this is crazy, and when it's crazy that much, you you can just be inspired by it. They had so they were breaking all the rules. <laughs> exactly, yeah. they were so trippy and so I don't know, I don't know even how to describe it, but totally trippy, like yeah. uh, like you know. You just basically, uh, like, you can watch at the moon <laughs> and get the inspiration for the album listening yeah. to Funkadelic, basically, yeah. Yeah, and then your, yeah, your mind is out of control, and then you're ready to <laughs> yeah, <laughs> change exactly. the world with that exactly. crazy inspiration, yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, yeah. for sure, yeah. The, the, all those kind of experimental bands, yeah, from the 60s and 70s, and also, um, I re- just listened to uh, Kurt Weill, because Kurt Weill is um, not that much famous, but he wrote the original of Alabama song of the Doors. <laughs> or the whiskey bar and stuff like this. So this is a song that was composed in the 30s, or in the 1930s, and the original is actually even more creepy than the version of the Doors. So I like this kind of composer, so yes, they brought a lot of influence into it, but... That's always good to look at the past, but also at the present, because yeah, sometimes it's good to remind you what are the young people doing right now, and wow, sometimes okay. you are also blown away, and they realize that they are able to make some synthesis of work that is absolutely insane. When it comes here to bands like Periphery, for instance, when they release the single Reptile, 
for me, this is my favorite song I heard from them because I'm not super fan of Chanzy genre, but when I discovered the song, I was like, wow, they just blew my mind. And you just get into the song without being into the, you know, the whole album and everything. You can just, you know, pick up the mood and that matches your vibe. But at that point, I guess, and you know, it it happens to me as well, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So sure, yeah, that's it. It's <laughs> that's the magic. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, and tell me, uh, what would be the most meaningful Gorod album, like something that, that very means to you, and why? Something um, like, you know. So, uh, I mean, I joined the band in 2010, so it was the transition between the third and the fourth album. And they were working already on Transcendence, so the EP with an extremely long song. And this song was also an excuse to make a connection between the previous singer, who was a beast, I mean a super specialist of death metal vocals. He's the number one of that. <laughs> no matter. <laughs> Unmatched, absolutely, in my opinion. And then I introduced some kind of clean vocals on it. So that was the beginning of trying to make a sort of soft transition, more or less. But, you know, I always saw this band as not as a fan, but as a friend, because we, we know each other for a longer time. And when they released, because I can say they, <laughs> because I was not in the band back in that time, uh, my favorite album was the second one, Leading Vision, has always been my favorite. And when I'm listening to the other album, I, saw, I really consider themselves as a piece of work. Of, so this is, uh, I feel like I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm working, I'm at my job. <laughs> Something like so I cannot that. really enjoy it as a fan. Or a living yeah. vision because I, I was I, I could um, I was not involved in it I didn't take part in it I was completely out out of the of that game because I was playing in the different bands we were already uh, sharing some stages because yeah I was playing in the previous band as a guitar player actually and we've been sharing the stage a couple of times with and their previous name was actually Gorgasm and then they signed a deal with Relative Records. Then they will have to change for Gora because of the American Gorgasm. And yeah, then, yeah, I know about the band. Yeah, yeah. And then afterwards, they finally released Living Vision, and they were already started to play some of that song. I really love that song when that album was released. And for me, this is still, if there is one example to follow that is typical of the Gora identity, this is this album. I also really love um, Process of a New Decline, but Process of a New Decline, the third one, is pure tech death album. And it's harder to me to listen in, in its entirety because it's a bit intense and there is a lot of variety, but yeah, to me, Leading Vision has something more, a bit more refreshing and um, yeah, definitely th this is my album and when we make song that sound like Leading Vision, I'm super happy. <laughs> so for me, yeah, definitely this is you know, my song. But at the moment, yeah, let's say, yeah, I think that the best one we made is the last one and that's, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay, so, but uh, tell me, uh, is there some, uh, probably, of course, you will get uh, more new fans, but if you would uh, recommend a uh, uh, new, I mean, some album to start with, uh, what would you choose? What do you think uh, that would be good for new fans to get into the band? Like, uh, what, what would be your choice for them? Oh, the, definitely the last one. Yeah, yeah, that's the best thing, because yeah, it really shows what we are doing right now. And... Actually, on stage, the majority of the set lists will be based on that. Sure, we always make play a synthesis of the whole career of the bands, but yeah, definitely the majority has to be the last one. And because this is the music we are playing with that lineup, and we know how to perform it. Because yeah, this or I'd rather when it's made with original musician. So sure, the three last albums are made with this, the exact same lineup for the recording yeah. session for live performance. So in case they like the studio version, sure, there will be no surprise. It just can be like the same or even better because this is live. So sure, I think we we perform better the, the latest songs because yeah, we're just pr we're practicing it more lately and this is more the music we are, this is more coherent compared to what we are actually doing. And this is more honest um, about what we are doing and what we are attending to. Uh, so, yeah, for me, yeah, definitely, it's <laughs> the, the latest. We, we are motivated by it. And we like new things. I don't like to do that much in the past, but a bit just to get, um, to be taught, to learn things, to keep learning things from the past, but don't say focus in the past and look. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, and also I think there is a little bit of everything, like uh, some kind of, uh, let, let, let's say review, but maybe it's not the best word, but you know what I mean. Like uh, you have a bit of everything, like, like a bit of every album in the new one, right? Like you have rotings, you have melodic, you have clean singing, you have great transitions. Uh, mix of uh, elements, so I think it's great to start with, exactly, yes. Especially yeah, it's, it's a bit yeah. more versatile, so this, you know, all the time, this, this aspect that we're trying to improve is the versatile aspect, you know, so on the latest one, this is a bit more represented than in previous records. Exactly, exactly, and uh, uh, I have also seen about, uh, I mean, your future tour, uh, future tour, and is there some band you would like to tour with I mean, I can say <laughs> my personal choice. Uh, I would like you to see on a tour with a specific band, and that's Carcass, of course, or Gojira. And you have mentioned earlier that you, uh, you you played earlier with Gojira, right? If yeah, I can yeah. remember well, right? Yeah. Uh, because they're also originally from the southwest of France, so we're not yeah, that yeah. far. But now they became so huge that this is insane how big they are now. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Honestly, I have seen them last year in Budapest. Oh my God! Like I don't know, it was one of the best concerts ever, probably. Sure. Yeah, and they were so pretty much down to earth. You know, they wanted to get picture and autograph with fans, and I really like that. You know, uh, that yeah. that's really that really shows appreciation to the fans. And yeah. uh, what about Parkas? Uh, I didn't even ask. I mean, if you like them, well, what do you, what are your thoughts on them? Uh, what about, you mentioned the band? Sorry. Ben, ben. Oh. Yeah, 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 Ben, Ben, Carcass. Well, well uh, I don't know which we are, there are so many because, yeah, we've been touring a bit, and, um, yeah, I, li I like to tour with friends, actually, <laughs> because we, oh. you know that the tour um, is going to be with a, yeah, this is going to be a good turnout, and we've been touring with so many cool bands like Obscura, the so cool to tour with them because they're so nice people, Beyond Creation, our friends as well, Artspire, your colleagues and so so I'm touring with Archpire, whatever he wants. <laughs> so, yeah, th these are these kind of bands for me that would be nice. With, but sure, Gojira would, would be also insane. But they are, there is a huge gap. <laughs> so now yeah. it's, not, it's not only a death metal band. This is now a super huge act. So this is almost impossible to access it. So to go into it. But um, definitely, if I would have to pick up one, it would be Meshuga. Oh, wow, that's a good choice, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> I agree on that. <laughs> yeah. So do you have plans to come to Budapest, maybe? Because it's the closest city, and I'm, I'm not from that place, but generally I have seen many bands come there, and it's like five hours away from my place. And if you have plans to come to Budapest, I would like to, <laughs> to know that to inform people, you know, to go together. Yeah, it's, it's, um, nothing is booked because I'm not in charge of the booking issues. Yeah. Actually, this is our, our agent is working on it. Yeah. So, but yeah, I guess we still got in touch with no promoter over there. So usually uh, we, we, we show up in Czech Republic, we play quite often there. And yeah, Czech Republic is supposed to be pretty close to, um, to Hungary. But yeah, I don't know why we, we never managed to play there and why. I don't know <laughs> how it works. How can, we put stuff together, our agents and promoters in Budapest or in other city. Last time I played in Hungary was in Pesh, and it was in 2011 with one of my previous bands, so it's already 12 years ago. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah, it's a long time. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know why it's that hard, or maybe just because we don't have the connection. Like, I don't know. But I would, I would love to do it. So just get in touch with us and yeah, give us our email to promoters and tell us yeah, to book a show or something there. Yeah, I'm done with it. <laughs> well, cool. And, okay, uh, so tell me, I just wanted to ask you something. <clears throat> oh, this, you have no time? <laughs> this eight. Oh, you paid. Okay, too bad, this, but... Yeah, I, I, that I even have no break at all. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Okay, uh, but I, I think we went through all the significant questions, let's just say. And yeah. uh, I was very pleased to meet you today. And of yeah. course, I wish a lot of luck in your future projects. Yeah, cool. Day. So that was so nice. Yeah, I, I didn't see the time running that fast. So yeah, Sigurd yeah. was like, no, it's already late. It's so <laughs> sorry, <laughs> don't kill me. It's like, you're always okay. out of time. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. That's, I'm so sorry. Seriously, that, but 
also, we had a lot of great topics as well. And um, good luck uh, for the next interview. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. <laughs> <Should be> okay. <laughs> yeah. So okay. thanks a lot for everything and enjoy yeah, you the... Too. Yeah. yeah, you too. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Bye-bye. You too. Bye.